Hey, so how's everybody doing today? This is Calvin Nighthawk Motors, and this is the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 High Country. This is a really nice truck. Kind of expensive too, but it's really nice. So today I'm going to be doing a review on this thing. I'm going to have probably about three or four videos coming up about this truck. I'm going to try to get all filmed today, but I'll slowly uh, release them out to the public. So this is the key for the high country. It's a really nice key, and I believe most of all the Chevys that are, key, are keyless, which I'm sure is pretty much all of them at this time, are going to be switching to it. You can see it's got a you know, standard unlock, lock keys. Um, it's also got a remote start, which you just have to hold down like that, and it starts the vehicle up. All right, so I'm going to show you how to work the tailgate on this vehicle. This is an automatic lift tailgate, which is really nice. And as you can see, you have backup camera. And I believe this is some kind of like sonar device or something along the lines of these. Um, it has to do with the rear view mirror, which is the camera up there, you can see. And I'll show you that later on. But for the rear tailgate, you can either do it manually like this, which isn't really manually anymore. Um, you press that button to have it go down, or you can press it to have it go up, or you can give the tailgate a slight lift and it detects that and it'll actually go up. And you also have on your key here, a little tailgate down button. Just press it twice, automatically lowers the tailgate for you from anywhere. Only problem with this is if you do this, you have to be at the vehicle to actually put it back up. You can't remotely put the tailgate back up. You have to come back and either press the button or give the tailgate a quick lift. And so as you can see, for the new redesign of the Chevy, I believe 2019 was the redesign year, um, they have a new uh, painted bumper for the high country, of course, which normal ones are usually chrome, but they have the integrated tail or the integrated tailpipe design, which is actually a uh, false tail tailpipe, as you can see. This is basically like they do on Lexus and, and luxury brands now. It's just like a nice little trim piece, whereas the actual exhaust pipe is in there and will allow it to kind of move around and not you know, juggle about. Still have a spare tire as well. All right, let's take a look at the bed and all the, the features in the bed. This is the 6.6 .6 foot bed, which seems to be harder to come by. They have the six foot bed as well for this. I don't believe there's an eight foot option. It's hard to find eight, eight foot beds nowadays. But as you can see, it's got the spray on liner, which came from the dealership. It's really nice, really nice. Actually looks like it's done perfectly. I don't see any, I don't have any complaints with it. But if you look all around, you have hooks. There's a total of 12 hooks all around the vehicle to tie stuff down with, along with a cargo light, another cargo light, and then a AC 120 volt, max 400 watt plug, which is awesome if you're camping or working, um, you know, if you're, if you're a craftsman and you're working, and you also have a gasket for that to keep water out. Here's the gas filler. This is a, thorough, a uh, gas cap list design, which is nice. I believe Ford came out with the original design. My old GT500 used to have that, which is really cool. I never had one problem with it. And this little um, plug here is actually for the Duramax diesel. That's where you put your diff fluid into. For anybody that doesn't know what the diff fluid is or def fluid, uh, it's basically something that gets injected in the exhaust of a diesel truck nowadays. It's been mandated to have it. All ve new vehicles have to have it but it's not really valid for this review, but I just want to give everybody an idea of what it is. Um, it basically cleans the diesel before it's released into the exhaust and um, through a chemical reaction, of course. Okay, and here's the wheels of the high country, or at least that this was specced with. These are two, uh, 275 50 R22s, which means it's a 275 width tire, a 50 sidewall, and a 22 rim. And the brakes are very big, as you can see. I mean, they are 22 inch wheels. So it makes them look small from a distance, but in reality, that's probably a 13 or a 12 or a 13 inch rotor, maybe even more. I haven't researched that yet. Um, but either way, it's plenty of stopping power, this thing. They still have a solid rear axle for towing. Go around to the front here. Nice optioned sidestep, which is very nice to have. It's convenient. 
Same wheels and tires in the front. Looks like the brake rotor is about the same size. It's got a four piston up front, four piston design. And then let's show you the front A-arm suspension. And they don't have a torsion bar anymore, which is nice. If you look in there. If you look in there, you see the whole design. It's a dual A-arm design, and there is a spring and a shock inside the spring, which is like a the standard design without the torsion bar, which I'm sure makes this thing ride a lot better. Press the button to get in, open the door. Here's the interior of the High Country. It's really nice. They call it a High Country for a reason, obviously. Now, before we go to the interior, let me show you how you get under the hood. You just go down here and you pull this. And if you are still in that remote remote start cycle, you haven't pressed the gas or the uh, start button yet, it will turn the truck off as soon as you pull that hood latch. All right, so here, lift up the hood. You gotta try to find the release. The release is right over here. So it's right along here. Release, let the hood go up. It's got hydraulic lifters on it. And that is the 5.3 liter engine. Fairly neat compartment. Looks like it's all really well done and put together. There's no wires loose or anything like that. Fuse box, another fuse box, or battery terminal. No, it's a battery actually there. Um, air intake is right here. See, they tell you do not spray water down it. No pressure washer goes down there and into the intake to keep it cool. And that is not your washer fluid. Don't put washer fluid in there. That's your overflow tank for your coolant tank. This is your washer fluid. It looks like it's got a really nice sized washer fluid tank. All right, let's close this up. I think we're done under here. As you can see from the front of this truck, it's got a really aggressive design now. I really like it. Um, when I first saw it in pictures and video, I really didn't like it, but when you see this thing in person, it looks awesome. It really does. They did a great job with it. I really like the front front grill. That front grill looks awesome. The light design is so much better than it was in the previous years. And the High Country comes equipped with like these nice chrome accents everywhere. And the, and the black bumpers and nice touch. It kind of breaks everything up. Makes it look really classy. I really like this. The functional air design around here. Actually helps it go through the bumper. Get you a little bit better gas mileage to re reduce turbulence underneath the actual uh, wheel well, which is always nice to have even though you probably never noticed it, but it probably does help the slightest bit. Another thing I just noticed, they have this like coating under here for rock chips, which really won't be too big a deal if you have this, but it's nice to have that anyway. You always used to see these on like Porsches and stuff. They always had like this really cool coating down here. It was like an anti-chip coating. Another feature I like of this vehicle is this. This is actually like an add-on piece, a little trim piece that looks really cool. Gives an extra little nice look. Let's take a look at the roof. Probably don't see that very often or use. But there's the camera. We'll show you that now, actually, as we make our transition into the interior. It's nice to have this grab handle. Okay. So, this is the interior of the high country. Yes, I'm sitting in it right now. It's very comfortable. Seats are firm. They're pretty firm, actually. They're not soft. They're not gonna like fall apart on you like the other models. Let me get rid of my little camera case here. Um, here and here. We have a sunroof. All right, so let's go over the window sticker of this vehicle. It's always nice to have a window sticker. All right, so let's start off with the standard equipment. If you guys cannot read this, we'll just give you a little screenshot here. It's got a three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, a five year, 60,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. Um, so basically, you know, bumper to bumper, that's basically everything aside from brakes and tires and things of that nature. Uh, powertrain warranty, obviously transmission and things of that nature, engine. Uh, roadside assistance, courtesy transportation. Um, basically they transport you if you're having issues. Um, Let's see here. First maintenance visit. 
uh, oil change, high rotation. I guess that comes included. So mechanical, the capless fuel fill, we already covered that. The two speed transfer case. So that's the four wheel drive system um, right here. They probably have a high and low option for it, which is nice if you're gonna be doing any hill climbing or towing while you're using the four wheel drive, it won't lug the engine. Gives you more torque down to the wheels. Trailering package, this one comes equipped with uh, trailer hitch, seven pin, four pin connectors. That's for the trailer, hitch guidance, uh, advanced trailering system, auto locking rear differential. That's a really big thing right there. And then the trailering system is, is this right here. This allows you to adjust your speed if you're going down a hill. It helps you use, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works. It's either the braking system on the trailer. I, I think that's probably what it is. It's the braking system on the trailer. So we covered all the standard equipment. So safety features is HD rear vision camera, which is what I was talking about. Um, this will actually look through that little uh, lens on the tail there and show you to build a track with trailer sway control and hill assist hill start assist which basically um i don't know what the trailer sway control is it's probably something with stability track um but the hill start assistant is basically it um probably puts the brakes on when you're on a hill so you don't go rolling backwards when you're transitioning from brake to gas a lot of cars have that nowadays front and rear park assist so that's those little uh sonar devices on the front and rear it basically tells you how close you are to the front or back of something you might not see uh, blind zone alert which are these little little things on the mirror um, you can't see those close the door a little bit here so you see on the very edge there that'll light up to an amber color and let you know if somebody's in your blind zone which you know is all the way from the back of the truck to the front rear cross traffic alert same thing basically just tells you what's going on around your vehicle so the exterior power up tailgate we went over, went over that already 12 fixed durable tie downs which is what we went over earlier they're coated uh, with each 500 pounds capacity which is very good so if you do the math between that that should be what six thousand pounds yeah that's around six thousand pounds uh what else do we have here so chevy tech spray on bed liner LED dur dur bed lighting. So it's got LED lights in those lighting areas on the back. Dual exhaust with bright trim, which is what we went over earlier. Corner step on rear bumper. You saw those. You basically just step up on those if you need some help. Chrome wheel to wheel assist steps. Truck name noise. Um, those are just just the steps on the side of the vehicle. Rear rear wheelhouse liners. So that is around the rear of the, um, the rear tires, which most trucks don't have, and that helps limit noise when you're running over rocks and things of that nature. Chrome front recovery hook, showed you that in that other exterior photo, it's basically just a doctored up hook that allows you to you know, be recovered if you're stuck. Power heat folding outside mirror with permitting light, um, which I'll show you right now actually. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'll start the engine up. Push button start, of course. Um, so let's go outside. I'll show you exactly what they're talking about. This is the permit lighting. Basically, you press that button there. And you have these little lights, which actually shine very brightly out in this direction. As you can see my hand. And it allows you to see what's around you instead of just straight in front of you. And that's really a really big deal. That's a really big deal when you're um, off-roading in like the pitch dark area, you can't see anything around you. You just press that button and you'll see any sticks or any incoming objects that potentially could damage your vehicle or, or get you stuck, which is an awesome feature. All right, where were we? I believe we were around here. I'm kind of blinded now by that light, it was pretty bright. Um, so mirror with permanent lighting, puddle lamps and memory seating. So I guess, what is a puddle lamp? It's like something down there. LED, HID uh, headlamps, which is nice. It's the white lights that are very bright and clear. Signature tail lamps, LED fog lamps. So it's got LED lights every, everywhere. Even on the interior, there's LED lights. Where's the light button? Right there. See, you can see the LED lighting. 
And you can also turn that off with this button here. It'll let you turn it off if you open the door. What else do we have here? It's getting a bit dark in here, actually. Can we turn it on? Oh, look at that. Yeah. All right. So what else do we have here? Leather appointed bucket stinks. Stinks. Leather appointed bucket front seats. So it uh, looks like both of them are automatic. 10-way power, including lumbar support. Heated and ventilated front seats. So you just have your heated and ventilated seats here on both driver and passenger. And the rear are actually heated as well. We'll get back there in a little bit. So these are ventilated seats. I really want these on a car. Um, I would really love to have these in my car right now. I have heated seats, luckily. But ventilated seats are something I really want and I definitely want next time. Heated seats. Turns off the ventilation. It would be cool if you could keep the ventilation on while they're heated so you can get like hot air and ventilation but you know it's still nice so they have a full heated seat or just a, a rear backrest heat uh, setting here and it's got three different controls on all of them three different levels I mean so it's 60 40 folding rear bench seats so those things fold down and there are little compartments behind there which I'll show you in a bit heated steering wheel heated steering wheel right there that is awesome. I love heated steering wheels. You can never go wrong with a heated steering wheel. We ever went over the keyless open and start. Power windows express up and down and front express. I guess that means it's really fast. That is really fast. I'm quite impressed actually. Is there like a slow setting for it? No, it's just fast. But they do have it so you can automatically Automatically have them go down. Same with the passenger side. Rears don't have it, doesn't look like. And you have your child safety uh, window locks here. And power folding mirrors. Now that is something like you see on a BMW or a Mercedes. That's really cool. And these buttons look all really high quality. They definitely did a step up on the interior in these trucks. It's really nice. Everything looks great. This is your unlock button. It's got a electric park brake. I believe you have to put the park brake set park brake released yeah you just have to um press this once and it'll lock the brake for you so park brake set you can actually hear it audibly if the engine's not on and then to get it off you just have to have to press the brake and press it once and it'll give you a notification when it's off and you can dismiss it if you wish there are so many options in this truck it's crazy we're gonna be here for years but this is the long review so we're gonna be here for years um, all right, so we went over all that rear window defogger. Yeah, so they have defrosters on the rear windows, and the rear window actually opens up. How do I do that? So they have a tailgate down button here, which I'm not going to press. Trash control hazards. I guess this is for a button for this. This. Oh, that's sweet. All the windows go down. All the windows went down with that. That is really cool. Except for the back one. How do I get that opened? Let's put them all back up, so it's kind of hot. Cargo lamp. Let's get back to the cluster over here. How do we get that rear window down? Somebody who has his truck probably knows it. And it's like, come on, man. That's not it, not it, not it, not it. We'll find it eventually. It's over here. No, no. No. Info new. So there's a park assist here and a lane keeping assist. So you can turn those off, which is nice. You got to hold them for a bit. I like these toggles and buttons. They're really cool. Remind me of a race car or jet airplane. Um, but yeah, I can't find that button anywhere. 346 minutes later. Is it up here? Oh, is this it? There it is. Oh yeah. Look at that. Get some cross ventilation in here. Surprise is up there, but alright. And then of course you have your, your full on, you know, sunroof. Standard sunroof nowadays. Everybody probably knows how to operate one of these. And you can tilt it as well. We're not gonna tilt it. Most people have operated one of these before. Anybody that's gonna be looking at one of these trucks. And this is actually a camera. If you can't tell. I wonder if there's a way to change it though. 
Oh, there's, yeah, see. Regular rear view mirror to camera. I believe Cadillac started doing this a while ago, a couple years ago. And it kind of transferred over to uh, Chevy. You know, they're all owned by the same company. Now let's get back to this. Uh, so it's got a tilt telescoping steering column. So that means this steering wheel can go up and down, back and forth. Auto dimming rear view mirror. Dual zone climate control. So that means both driver and passenger have different uh, controls if they wish. Wireless charging, which is actually right here. You can put your phone right down there, which is it's an awesome, awesome place to have. That's just where you'd want it. Um, power outlet, 120 volt, right here. Uh, cigarette lighter. And then they have a uh, USB, probably 3.0 and a USB-C. Steering wheel audio controls. Um, so this is the cruise control, audio controls, and they also have little buttons on the back to change track and also um, adjust volume. Bedside instrument panel, steering wheel audio controls, universal remote for uh, universal home remote. Garage door controller, I guess, I don't know. Um, Chevrolet infotainment, three premium with navigation, eight inch screen. Uh, it's a touch screen as well, voice recognition. Bluetooth audio string, everybody needs that. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, they have everything in this car, well, truck. Uh, capable in vehicle apps and personalization capable. Um, Sirius XM, 4G LTE Wi-Fi with hotspot, which is awesome. I wonder if you have to pay for that a month. That'd be interesting to know. All right, so we went over all the um, standard equipment for the high country. Let's look at the options. So the High Country Deluxe, Ford Collision Alert, uh, Lane Keep Assist with Lane Departure, Low Speed Ford Automatic Braking, that's cool, um, which basically means it'll brake for you automatically if somebody pulls in front of you. Front Pedestrian Braking, same thing. IntelliBeam Auto High Beam Lights, which is actually here. You see this little A on the high beams? That'll allow you to have automatic high beams. And I remember BMW first came out that years ago, I believe. Safety alert, seat, okay, um, sunroof, yes, 22 inch polished aluminum wheels went over that, all season tires, all weather floor liners, which the dealer installed, and that's this basically, there's still carpet under here, it's just all formed all around here, which is really nice, you see all that, it's just going to keep this place really clean, um, what else, technology package, HD surround vision, I, I don't even know yet, man, It's a lot of stuff. But yeah, let's just go ahead and put this away for now. And we'll just try to look around at the interior. All right, so you're basically looking at this from, you know, something that's around 5'11", 6 foot. This is how you'd sit in this vehicle. That's nice. The steering wheel's small. It's not huge. Uh, I haven't gotten on the road yet. This is actually the first time I'm seeing this vehicle, but it's very nice. Let's go ahead and start this thing up again. Nice. We have a bunch of storage in there. Let's see what this looks like. Nice vanity mirrors. Oh, I like that. The lights like dim for a second and then they come on full force so you're not shocked when you're looking at it. That's really cool. Let's see that again. Look, ready? And then it brightens. That's that's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, this leave that open for light. High country embroidered headrests, really nice seats. I mean, look at look at the seat, look at the design of this thing. Look at that seat. That is that's a really nice seat, really comfortable too. And I guess these go up. Yeah, they go up. I'm surprised they don't have the automatic ups on them. What is this down there? A little adjustment. All right, so let's sit in the back real quick, and we'll show you the back. Um. This is all soft touch, by the way. Let's go over soft touch real quick before I get out of the front. They have wood, fake wood, of course. Uh, this is plastic down here. Soft touch material all up in here. This is a nice quality to it. Seems like a uh, vinyl sprayed or something. Soft touch stitching. You don't see any paint on the interior, which is really nice. They cover it up. Soft touch up here with the stitching. Soft touch, soft touch. And they even have a little cubby up here for your, uh, whatever you want, your personal effects. Soft touch, soft touch is leather wrapped, of course. Soft touch all through here. 
Um, this is not soft touch, so all soft touch stuff above, above here, where you'd really need it. If you're ever getting an accident, God forbid. And it isn't too hard to see out of. As you can see, we're looking around the vehicle right now. It's pretty easy. Yeah, so I think that about does it for the front. We'll get into the infotainment system in a different video. There is just too much stuff to cover in this truck. Um, so I'm gonna try to do a small driving portion with this video after we get the rear seats done. Uh, then we'll upload a couple more videos about the infotainment system and a POV driving video and things of that nature. So. I know it's been a long video so far. I really appreciate you guys sticking in there, but this truck has a lot of stuff I have to cover. I can't just leave it go. So let's go ahead and take a sit in the back real quick and then we'll take it out for a quick drive. So this is the rear of the vehicle. Probably the same thing here. This is plastic, plastic, plastic. It's got a Bose surround sound system in it too, which is nice. I don't know, I haven't heard it yet, but. Uh, all soft touch up here, all covered up, which is nice. Window button. No unlock buttons. I'm sure there's a touch child safety feature back here too. Hopefully it's not on. Thank you. <laughs> all right, let's turn these off. All those are on. All right, all right, so this is the back seat. I'm about 5'11". Um, pretty average build, but you can see like I was, sitting up, I was sitting up front in like a really good position. And now I'm in back. Look at all this room. Like you could be freaking really have really long legs back here and be able to sit back here comfortably now my head i still have a good amount of room with my head you might run into a small issue if you lean back if you're really tall but like if you if you're able to lean forward like this you'd still be able to manage it it wouldn't be the most comfortable ride but uh, i mean considering different kinds of pickup trucks without the extended cab this thing's awesome it's really nice back here too they didn't forget about the back seat that got heated seats back here on both sides obviously cup holders for the people in the back which is nice they have these little storage cubbies chevy loves their little hidden compartments it's kind of like the the c7 corvette where they hid the compartment behind the uh behind the front infotainment screen let me get this down I think he lifted up. I don't really want to move. Yeah, we'll leave it. I know the back seats will slide up as well, so you can have more room back here. Uh, but yeah, I think that pretty much covers the back here. And this is a little view from the back. So yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get this thing out on the road and see what it drives like. So we're just getting this car on the road here. Make sure it's going to be dropped behind us. And we're good. All right, so I did drive this car around for maybe 20 minutes so far. And it is really nice. This thing handles really well. It's got really good noise uh, damping in the cabin. You Honestly, I feel like this truck is quieter than that Mercedes I reviewed. And I hate to, I hate to actually compare it to a Mercedes, but it's really good. Um, I'm sure they borrowed a lot of technology from Cadillac in this truck. Um, all the windows are up. It has really good power. It's really smooth. I really don't have any complaints about the drive at all. The only little complaint I'd have about this truck is... What is this guy doing? Come on, bud. I guess I could go around him. Yeah, we go around him. Only complaint I really have about this truck is just the steering wheel. I feel like the steering wheel could have been a slightly better design. I feel like it just doesn't fit your uh, your 10 and 2 grip too well, or 10 and 3, whatever it is. I think, yeah, it's like 10 and 2. The 10 and 2 grip doesn't feel great on it. But, I mean, that's, you know, you can get, a, get, a, get around that if you have to. It's not too big a deal. Everything else about the truck, though, is absolutely awesome. Um, there's no other complaints that I have at all. It doesn't really have any kind of drawbacks i have not found anything i don't really like about it the ride is firm but it's not back braking uh, i know i used to i drove around a um, like a 2015 2500 hd and that thing had like a horrible drive but this thing is there's no comparison between those two this thing is such a smoother ride 
and it feels like they really did a good job with the suspension on this vehicle. Uh, what else do we have here? The transmission shifts very smooth. There's no hesitation when you go to accelerate. It's just right. It responds right when you want it to. Um, the heads up display, which I don't get into yet. I'll get that into that in another video. I'll make another video about the whole infotainment system and how it works. That works very well. It's very easy to see. Uh, the only other thing I would say is probably that rear view mirror with the camera. This it takes a little, it takes a little longer to adjust your eyes from the road to that. Uh, it's probably like a half a second or something to your eyes adjust to it. But you know you might be able to get used to it faster. I, it's just the first time I've ever seen it, so it's probably just a little hard. It probably uh, you probably get used to it. Um, yeah, throttles ex throttles very good. The brakes are great on the truck. Ride comfort's great. Noise is really not really existent to be honest with you. You can hear the engine a little bit. You can hear a little bit of road noise. But that's pretty much the same with any vehicle. Um, it's just a really good truck. I can't really say anything bad about it. You know, there's nothing bad to say about it. Only praise. Everything you'd want in a truck. I mean, this is pretty much it. Now, this is coming from somebody that usually drives cars. I've have it, I have experience driving a good amount of trucks. Um, trucks in the past. I've driven basically my whole life, not daily, but I do know what a good truck feels like, and this is definitely, it's definitely a good truck. It's got plenty of power. It's only got 200 miles on it, so I don't want to give it the beans or anything like that. I, I you know, you can look up the zero to 60 at a time on this truck. It's probably like seven seconds or eight seconds or something like that. I know, uh, you know, it's got that three point or not three liter. It's got the 5.7 liter in it or five, three. 5.3 liter in it um, and it's making like I think it's like 380 horsepower or something along those lines 360 to 380 and it's a very smooth engine uh, has a really good throttle response uh, I don't know about the fuel economy you can look up those figures online uh, you're better off always going to forums though to look up like people's reviews of fuel economy like real reviews not like the EPA economy ratings because sometimes those can be skewed especially if you're driving in like a neighborhood area with a bunch of stop signs or you're constantly accelerating decelerating and things like that nature um, so I always found it better to look up actual people's reviews of gas mileage and, and any issues people are having with the vehicles I see it from outside the vehicle all right so we're gonna take this thing to the highway real quick and I'll show you what it's like on the highway and how it sounds and everything like that all the good things truck's got low miles on it so I don't want to I don't want to you know put the throttle on too much still has to break in So we're going about 55 right now. You can still hear that Focus ST up there, but you cannot hear the road. That's pretty good, actually. That's really good. And people tend to drive really fast down here. If you can tell, they're going way by the speed limit. Cruise control is very easy to manage. Um, lane keep assist. Pretty cool. He gave me a little bump to push me back. Yeah, that's that's cool. Kind of like the Honda system. I drove my brother's Honda Accord Sport. That's got the lane keep assist in it and actually does the same thing where it, it'll let you have a certain amount of time um, without your hands on the steering wheel, basically. But I'm not going to do that with this truck. I'll try that again. Yeah, it, it lights up as amber, and then it pushes you right back. It turns the steering wheel for you. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so that pretty much concludes this long, this long review video. Um, if you guys would, if you please comment in the video. Let me know what you thought of this truck in the review. If there's anything I can do better on my my reviews, I'm always ears. I, not, I don't get really angry at people's comments unless they're like 
kind of like comments, like rude comments. I don't like rude comments, but any any creative feedback you guys have for my channel, I'd really appreciate it. And um, you know, if you like this stuff, you know, why not subscribe and like the video? I'd really appreciate appreciate that as well. So I will be having a couple more videos coming up on this vehicle. I'm gonna do a POV driving video, uh, entertainment system video, how the entertainment system and infotainment system works, because there's a lot of stuff on it. And quite frankly, this video would be like an hour long if I did that. Um, what else could we do? Eventually, maybe we'll do like a 060 video or something like that. But yeah, this thing's a nice truck, guys. If you're looking at one of these, it's really nice. Really nice. So, appreciate y'all watching. Thank you.